banking expert. James in Cheshire, Rachel in Wimbledon. Good morning, good morning. We've got Sean here as well. Hi, Rachel. Hi there. What's your story? Well, I think that one thing that you asked earlier this morning was, do the big banks still have too much power? And I would absolutely say that they do. One of the things that hasn't changed at all since the financial crisis and one of the things that caused the financial crisis was the power that big banks have over our economy, over our lives. When they create loans, extend loans to people, they actually create money at that point, And then they charge us interest on the money that they lend us. And they know that they can do this because the government, the Bank of England, will bail them out as they did at the last financial crisis. This is part of a much bigger system change that we need to change. It's a system we've created and it's a system that we can change. And I would encourage anybody out there to look up positive money, who talk about this, who expose this through their research and who do campaign about it around the country through their local groups and their uh, supporters. Right, Sean, can you enlighten us any more? Apart from Rachel, has thus far? Well, uh, banks obviously do provide a very wide service to people. I mean, I like that the thing she said about they're creating money out of thin air and then charging you interest for it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's notional a lot of this, uh, isn't it? Uh, well, Fran Francis does a lot of work uh, you know, on that kind of thing about you know <laughs> what is going on behind the scenes. It's your Freddie Max and your Fanny Max, isn't it? No, oh, that's no. a very American thing, and I think we shouldn't get hung up on that. I mean, the way American, the American mortgage market works is entirely different from the UK. They securitise everything, and they um, basically banks get their, get mortgages off their balance sheets and dump them into these huge warehouses, which is what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are. It's very, very different. Fannie from Mae, the UK. Freddie Mac. I thought there were two Macs. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, Fannie so. Mae, Freddie Mac. Yeah, okay. Very, very different from the UK, and we shouldn't confuse the two. This one has been a kind of a long-running demand now since the financial crisis to sort of shock horror. Banks create money when they when they lend, um, which for a long time economists said no they don't, and then the Bank of England waded in saying yes they do in about 2014, and everybody went quiet. Um, we, it, it's it's still one of these. One of the benefits of moving to a system where banks are not allowed to create money at all when they lend, they must pre-fund all loans. Um, and what are the costs? And I have looked at this fairly extensively myself. I remain unconvinced of the benefits of such a system because mm. I think that it would give way too much power to the central bank. Mm. Rachel, you want to come back? Sorry, I didn't quite catch the last bit of what Francis said there. Sum it up, Francis, in a sentence. Okay, if I sum it up, um, I looked at this in some detail and concluded that actually it would be extremely difficult to remove the money-creating power from banks without giving what I would call far too much power to the central bank, and in particular requiring the MPC to make decisions about how much money the economy needs really quite far that, in advance. Yeah, do you believe that at the moment it is fair, though, that up to 97% of the money in our economy is created by private banks, and it's up to them, private institutions, where that money goes. It's not a slightly better balance than we currently have, but the central bank, which is ultimately accountable to the people, should have more say than these private institutions. Well, interesting, Rachel, I've had a look at what you referred as to positive money, and it's a very, very interesting line that they're taking which is what you're telling us about that we face massive challenges in the world and changes in the world whether they be economic or environmental and the banks aren't fit for purpose for those purposes absolutely and i think a lot of people around the country are feeling this sense of you know we can't just twinkle around the edges here there is a system that is actually broken that is serving the one percent at the expense of everybody else, inequality is soaring in the UK. House prices are hugely out of the reach for most ordinary people. We are not tackling the environment crisis. But we actually change the cause, the root causes of this. And people around the country, politicians, economists, are gradually waking up to this. But I really encourage you to check out positive money videos, our resources on there, because it's just... It's, it's so clear it's not working well. It's a very, very interesting perspective and thank you for putting it out there this morning.